Okay, so in this lecture, I want to answer a question, which is, can YouTube teach me calculus? Okay, and so I feel like this is a really contemporary question because this isn't really a question you would have heard, say, 10 or 20 years ago, right? This is more of a recent phenomena where you have people who teach science and math on YouTube and seem to teach it very intuitively, right? They have lots of fans, lots of people like to watch these instructors or YouTube influencers. And so you've got to wonder, you know, is this a good way to learn calculus or any other subject for that matter? Okay, and so, well, basically my answer is no, okay? And this lecture will explain why. Now, I'm not going to name any names in this lecture, but some of the most popular YouTubers are very popular because they make some of these advanced math concepts seem very intuitive. And this is a good thing, you know? I'm not putting these instructors down. What I'm saying is this is great content and it has its purpose, but the problem is it doesn't serve our purpose. Okay, so essentially what I find is that this content is geared towards more entertainment than problem solving. Okay, and you've got to know that YouTube itself, the company, is in the business of entertainment, not education. Okay, they want to make money. They want your clicks, they want your attention, they want you to watch advertisements. Okay, so it's important to also pay attention to the incentives. And so you might wonder, you know, what is the difference between educational content and problem solving? Well, problem solving requires real understanding and entertainment does not, right? You can sit there and watch a video, but there's nobody to check your understanding. Okay? There's nobody to confirm that you actually understand what you watched or that you can perform the most important tasks. And so really what happens is these students will watch YouTube videos in order to meet the prerequisites or learn math concepts. So, you know, they'll see my course and they'll see that, oh, calculus is a prerequisite for this subject. So I'm going to go learn calculus on YouTube, watch a few calculus videos, and then ta-da, I know calculus. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Okay. And what's ironic is that this is actually going to make things more difficult for you because you believe you understand now, right? You have this confidence that you understand, yet you still don't. And it's a real blow to your ego to accept that you still don't. You know, it's very hard for you to accept. So if you go down this path and then you convince yourself that you know calculus, even when you do not, um, it's going to take a lot more time and effort to unravel for you. Okay, so, you know, that's something you have to keep in mind. And what I've seen is that people hold very tightly to these beliefs and they will, in general, make whatever excuses necessary to convince themselves that they do, in fact, understand and, you know, everyone else in the world is wrong. Okay, but really, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is just a single question. Can you do problem solving or not? Right? Can you solve the problems in front of you? Because that's what really matters at the end of the day. We don't care that your intuition is good or your intuition is bad or you understand this picture or you're able to regurgitate these concepts. That's not really what it's about. Right? The reason that calculus or any other math subject is a prerequisite to a course is because you'll be using those tools and techniques in that course. And if you're not able to use those tools and techniques, but if all you can do is say, oh, I watched this YouTube video and I understand these animations, this is, not, this is not going to be very helpful for you. And so one thing that I see a lot is people treat learning too much like collecting credentials than actual learning, right? So they want the certificate, they want the degree, whatever. And something that is correlated with this is the amount of hours you've watched of a video. So say you watch 10 hours of YouTube on calculus, that might make you feel like you've mastered this subject of calculus, but this is really meaningless if you can't perform the actual duties expected of you, right? So let's just say, you know, you had a job and your job was to solve calculus problems, okay? Well, would your boss pay you if you couldn't solve those problems, but you watched 10 hours of YouTube on calculus, right? The answer is no. Your output dictates whether or not you will get paid or whether or not you are performing well at this job. So if you cannot produce the output, if you cannot perform your duties, then your so-called skills are effectively pointless. And you know, I should say that I watch many of these videos myself. You know, I like to watch videos about quantum physics and theories of everything and gravity and all that stuff. But I understand that I'm not going to be a quantum physicist. So these videos are okay for me. You know, I don't want to get a degree in physics. I'm just fine watching these videos. However, you have to understand that if you're in my courses, that's not what my courses are for, right? My courses are for getting you an actual job, getting you these actual skills so that you can use them in the real world. And I assume that's because you actually want to do machine learning and I don't believe that you're taking my course in the same way that you'd watch YouTube videos where you just want to see what it's all about. I assume that you want to become a professional and work on these tasks as a professional. Okay, and I think the physics videos are really good examples of this, right? Because computer science and programming and machine learning are very popular subjects, right? So a lot of people are trying to get these jobs. So it's kind of a bad comparison. But if you look at physics, right? With physics, not many people want to become professional physicists, right? They don't want to do physics for a job. Okay, and so I think we have a good understanding that if you watch a video on physics on YouTube, this isn't going to make you better 
at your job as a physicist or an engineer. Okay, so I want you to apply the same reasoning to machine learning as well, to math. When you watch a math video on YouTube, this is more for entertainment. It's not for making you good at performing a task that you can do at a job. So another question people might ask is, well, why can't you do it both ways? Why can't you teach it both the way that they teach things on YouTube with, with animations and without very much math and more focusing on the intuition and then do the problem solving later? And so to these people, you have to remember what goes into these videos. So based on uh, interviews of some of these YouTube influencers and blog posts by these authors, it takes approximately a month, okay, 30 days to make a single five to 10 minute video. Okay, so <laughs> that's, not, that's not very efficient, right? If you look at how long this course is, it's about 11, 12 hours so far, um, 14, 15 hours, depending on which version you're taking. And so now if you were to extrapolate that, say um, an average course is eight hours long. So how long would it take to make an eight hour course? Well, I would leave that for you as an exercise, but I know some of you aren't going to bother doing it. So I'll tell you the answer. Okay, so eight hours is 480 minutes, okay, 480. And if we assume that each video is five minutes, then we'll have 96 videos. 480 divided by five is 96. Okay, so if each video takes one month to make, then since we have 96 videos, this would take 96 months. And how long is 96 months? Well, that's eight years. So, so in order to make an eight hour course, it's going to take eight years. Now at this point, that's approximately the amount of time I've been making courses. And in that time, I've made about 30 courses. Okay, so needless to say, the answer is no. I won't be spending eight years of my life just to make calculus videos. And another thing to realize is that you have to remember YouTube is a modern invention. Okay, so remember, we have generations and generations of people who have learned math without the need of this modern technology. Okay, and so you have to realize that if you find that you need these entertainment style videos in order to learn math, this is a sign that you are doing something incorrectly. You know, because people have been learning these concepts for generations. Hundreds of years of our society has managed to learn these concepts without these pretty animations. And so this reminds me of a movie that came out some years ago. It's an animation. It's called WALL-E. And what it showed us is a physical manifestation of what I'm seeing happen to the mental capacity of students today. Okay, basically it showed people who are physically incapable of doing anything because they let technology do everything for them. Okay, and so just think about it this way. If your father and mother were able to do it and their fathers and mothers were also able to do it, you should make sure that you shouldn't represent a de-evolution of your genetics. Instead, you should improve over past generations, not get worse. Okay, so this slide is all about practice versus entertainment. What's the difference? So this is another important dichotomy to recognize. So why can't you learn, say, calculus using YouTube as opposed to taking a college course? And this is because YouTube videos generally don't make you practice, right? They don't make you do homework. They don't make you take exams. And that's the only thing that will build your real intuition. So people think that watching videos is giving them intuition, but that's not intuition. Intuition is what you earn. It's what you find after having worked hard to solve problems. Okay, and I encourage you to watch the lecture, How to Code by Yourself, which can be found in the FAQ of most of my machine learning courses to see another video on this topic of real versus fake intuition. Okay, and if you don't have access to any of my machine learning courses, I'll gladly send you this video for free. So just email me if you want to see this video. Okay, and so the real problem here is that people think a YouTube video gave them intuition, but this is usually not true, right? What it really did was it made them feel good inside. Okay, but your feelings, your feelings, how you feel inside, these are just emotions. These are chemical signals in your brain, but they don't reflect your true ability to actually do calculus or do math. Okay, real intuition is something that you must earn. Okay, basically it's a matter of pattern recognition. Have you seen this before? And do you know what to do when you see this pattern? Okay, and in order to have this intuition, you must have had enough practice to recognize the patterns in order to build up that intuition. Okay, without practice, your intuition is just based on rote memorization of facts, right? Maybe you can memorize the illustration you saw in a YouTube video, but that doesn't mean you can actually do calculus and solve calculus problems, which is the whole point because later in machine learning, you're going to be using that calculus to solve further problems. Okay, and so on the flip side, how does college give you practice, right? So I'm talking about practice is important, so presumably you're going to get a lot of practice in college. Okay, and so how does college give you this practice? Well, basically college does this by using the tools of fear and threat, okay? Fear and threat. In order to graduate, you must pass the course, which means you must pass your exam and do all the homework. And in order to do that, you must study and practice. Okay, basically you're being forced to do it. Okay, and if you fail to do this, then you will lose your money or have to pay more money to take the course again, which instills fear. And that fear is what causes you to take things seriously to ensure that you pass. Okay, I'm not saying it's the ideal system, but it is a system that works.
And so if you want to be a self-guided learner, you have to figure out another method, a method that will motivate you just as well as fear and threat in order to convince yourself to do this practice. Okay, so I wanted to make a little addition to this lecture since I recently discovered this nice video, which is basically saying the exact same thing I said in this video. And so this video is called Still Don't Understand Gravity, This Will Help. And it's by a YouTube channel called The Science Asylum. Again, if you want to watch this video, it's on YouTube. And there's a link to it in extrareading.txt in the course repo. Okay, so I really like this video for multiple reasons. One being that it introduces the phrase edutainment, which is, I think, in a sense, more accurate than what I've been saying, which is just entertainment. Okay, so edutainment is obviously a combination of the words education and entertainment, which is kind of what these videos I've been describing are. Okay, and this YouTuber is making a comment that a lot of these physics videos are the same thing. Right, it's part entertainment, but it's also part education. Since, for example, it's not like watching a movie, there is some educational aspect to it. Now, there's another reason I really like this video, because it basically gives you a list of books to read, and it tells you which exercises in these books to do. So it's not like an intuition video like you might expect, like a typical YouTube edutainment video, where you have nice pretty animations and a nice explanation that you know everyone can understand. It's really honest that, okay, if you want to master the subject, here's a list of books that you have to read, and here's a list of exercises that you should be able to do. And I like this because it tells people what they don't want to hear, right? It tells people that in order to actually gain a true understanding of this subject, you simply have to read those textbooks, which you may have previously considered, you know, too boring for a person of high stature such as yourself. You know, it's basically saying we're all the same. You know, if you want to master this stuff, well then too bad. You just have to go through the same work that everyone else has. And so I think sharing these videos really helps because you're always hearing this from me, but you might assume that I'm biased because I'm the instructor of the course. And of course, I'd like to teach it my own way. So I like to point to other instructors saying the same thing, right? This is not something I made up. This is really true. This is really true, and this is the way that it works.